What is up, Final Community? A little bit of a change of pace here as I'm gonna go through my Beastie Boys collection, basically a discography of all their studio albums with some extras thrown in. Uh, the Beastie Boys, Mike D, Mike Diamond, uh, Adam, MCA, Yauk, and also Ad Rock, and don't forget Mixmaster Mike as their DJ. One of my favorite things about the Beastie Boys is that they never took themselves too seriously, but they could always deliver some seriously socially aware uh, magic with words. Uh, I love the way their voices work together or at each other, uh, antagonistic sounding or motivating or funny. Um, I'll never be able to see them live, so some of my favorite performances that have been recorded are the Sabotage video uh, when they did the 70s cop show. Uh, David Letterman, they had a David Letterman appearance where they started filming out on the uh, streets of New York and they begin the song and they rap all the way into the studio with one continuous shot and finish there uh, on the studio stage at David Letterman's uh, uh, studio. Uh, the music video for Make Some Noise is one of my top 10, maybe top 5 favorite all-time videos. Started out kind of as the frat boy party, uh, just kind of just being funny uh, with their debut album, but got way more sophisticated, more mature, and more complex uh, with so much to offer in their albums beyond that. So I'm a big Beasties fan. Wish I could have seen them live, but I'll forever have their collection uh, of recordings here uh, to remember and celebrate them by. Some of the things I liked about the Beastie Boys was that uh, they never wanted to be one of their songs to be used in commercials. Thought that was really cool, and to this day they've kind of held up to that. I've seen some commercials leak here and there with some uh, Beastie Boys tracks on it, uh, but they're quickly shut down, or there's you know litigation uh, uh, issues with that right away. So I don't know. I mean, that's also in Adam uh, Yauk's will that that should never to be used in commercials, but we'll see if that holds up over time. Um, if they're ever gonna get back for a reunion, um, like the, the two original members, uh, there has to be a third person out there that would be perfect to fill in. I wouldn't say, of course not, never replace, but fill in, just the right person to fill in for Adam Yalk. And, and I think a, uh, it would be awesome to see some kind of reunion. But hey, we're gonna rewind back to 1983, the earliest um, incarnation of the band uh, did not have all three members in it. Uh, they started out as a punk band uh, from New York City. Uh, this is their debut EP, Polywalk Stew. Uh, all, all out and out punk, um, short songs, fast beats, and kind of a nasty, uh, like say, uh, snarly uh, punk, <laughs> as Garner might uh, describe that. But Polywalk, this is not an original, uh, but uh, to try and find this on an album would be difficult. This is a reissue. I thought it was original when I tracked it down at a record fair, but anyway, they got it started with Polywalk Stew, and then they released a, uh, a single called Cookie Puss, and this really kind of put them on the map. This is where they started experimenting with loops and tracks and rapping, and uh, this is also the, the uh, first, I think this is the first lineup of the band with all three, all three members, as I mentioned before. Uh, but this is Cookie Puss, basically it's a prank call, uh, kind of in the Jerky Boys fashion where they take the prank call, put a little beat behind it, and then have some uh, loops of their Polywalk Stew EP mixed in there, and just having a little bit of fun with it. And then also on this EP is uh, Beastie Boys Re uh, Revolution. On the B side is uh, Bonus Batter. So getting started there with the hip hop scene. So me living in the middle of suburbia in the, in the Midwest, um, first time I heard anything like this kind of stuff uh, was with Run DMC. So Run DMC started uh, making its way over to the Midwest and uh, King of Rock actually had to go back and get King of Rock because I started out with Raising Hell. This tape, uh, my buddy Brad passed it to me um, during one of our breaks at school. It went from, I mean, this is total contraband uh, at the school. So uh, the tape got passed to me from Brad over to me and my book bag went home and listened to it. Blew my mind. I, I just loved it. And uh, before too long, I was memorizing every word and uh, listening to as many times as I could before I had to give the tape back. So, Raising Hell, I know every song on this. And uh, Run DMC also makes it up a lot of humor, uh, bringing this new sound, this rap, this hip hop sound, and, and making it big and breaking down all kinds of barriers. So, that's kind of where it started for me. This is on profile, this is original. This has since been reissued. 
uh, great simple beats but a lot of content a lot of attitude and I think that's what I picked up on the most was the attitude <laughs> You also had just a couple years later and a year after the next album I'm going to show from the Beastie Boys was ba was um, like DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Um, parents just don't understand. So hip hop, rap with an attitude and a lot of humor mixed in. Uh, so the first time I heard uh, track "Fight" or uh, "Fight for Your Right to Party" from the Beastie Boys at my age, it was just perfect timing. <laughs> I mean, just just a lot of fun. I love the attitude. Uh, buddy of mine had a tape, had the tape came over to my house and we went down on the uh, corner uh, of the street and played it on his little radio. And I also remember playing Paul Revere. I uh, had the tape queued up and, and rewound it, played Paul Revere, and just that backwards bass and the little story. And he was singing along to every word. I was like, oh, I gotta, get, I gotta memorize this too. Uh, so Paul Revere and Fight, Fight for Your Right to Party was uh, my introduction to the Beastie Boys. And then uh, of course the tape was uh, Licensed to Ill. So uh, this this is an original. You could send you know since then a, a reissue's been out. Hold this up to the mirror, and that says "Eat Me" is pretty common. Easter egg on the album cover, and let's see, kind of looks like a uh, J being put out there. <laughs> Breaking into the seam, and this thing went. Um, just I wanted to say double platinum I have no idea but it was really popular we loved it produced by Rick Rubin who also at the same time was doing Slayer's Rain and Blood actually came over and said uh, ask Kerry King if he'd like to do the guitars uh, for one of the songs and Kerry King came over and did the guitar uh, guitar parts for Fight for Your Right to Party which was actually kind of making fun of metal so uh, awesome debut album just love that uh, this is on the Def Jam recording which was perfect for the Beastie Boys at the time. All right, next up, one of my favorite, if I had to pick one, one of my favorite all-time Beastie Boys albums, Paul's Boutique. Famous shot picture. One day when I go to New York, I hope to visit this location. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary reissue, and this is on a double gatefold that opens up for about 12 feet long. I'm not sure if this is this. Same picture or not. Um, this is just an incredible album. Take a look at the uh, artwork there. The reissue has all the lyrics in one big run on sentence, which is often how I talk. <laughs> uh, this is on uh, the Capitol label. This is on a rainbow Capitol. You know, I remember playing this more in 96 <laughs> than I remember playing it in 89. So fast forward a couple three years you've got a uh, classic Beasties album Check Your Head famous al album cover love this photograph. Ah uh, now something for the kids our next guest will be performing a song from their third album I have a copy of it right here it's entitled Check Your Head ladies and gentlemen no trouble all right hey no trouble there you go here they are the Beastie Boys this is the reissue. There's the guys in the studio jamming there. So the, one thing about this is you're sitting back, you're listening to the Beastie Boys. They got a new album out. You're expecting nonstop hip hop from front to back, and then all of a sudden this funk break breaks out, and it's kind of like this relaxing kind of reset, you know, reset the palate and get ready for another round. But uh, but I just really started uh, co to connect with that right away. You know, dad listened to some jazz and funk and I have that, in, you know, I have that musically in my background. And uh, when Beastie started doing it, I mean, I just perked right up and loved it. And it would continue to be a theme throughout their albums. And uh, in a few albums ahead, I was uh, just totally dedicated to funk breaks. Pass the mic is on here. Um, and the classic, So What You Want. Next up is 1994's uh, Ill Communication. Classic, classic cover. And uh, this is the one where the Beasties are doing the uh, sabotage video where they're dressed up like the 70s cops. Uh, also, Sure Shot is on here. Uh, this is an original double LP, and the originals were put on this transparent green, which just looks awesome with that Grand Royal label. Very happy to score this original some time ago classic Beasties album. And then here's the uh, 
uh, single for sure shot. We always, us record collectors, we like it when there's records on the uh, cover. So uh, this features the album. My, what are they giving me here? <laughs> All right, so taking a break from the norm, the Beasties uh, released the In Sound From Way Out, which is a compilation of all their funk uh, instrumentals uh, all put together. This is a, a kind of a rare US press. This was distributed by the audiophile uh, distribution company called Cisco. And this really cool album, I mean, just laid back and very chill album. Uh, Eric uh, Bobo uh, Korea is on this album. He's worked with Cypress Hill and his dad is also, uh, his dad was a famous uh, jazz musician. Um, and then also Money Mark. Money Mark helped contribute to a lot of the writing and a lot of the, uh, and a lot of the uh, uh, music and instrumentals. So they, they did get some support on that. And I'll just take a break here real quick and, and pull this up. This is uh, Beastie Boys Awesome, I Shot That. Highly recommend this concert. So the concept behind this is they take all the fans and they pass out a bunch of cameras. I forget what year this was, but they pass out a bunch of the uh, newer, like handheld video cameras, camcorders, and uh, they just give it to a whole big team of people, and then they take all the videos back and edit it all together. That would have been an editing nightmare. Uh, but this is one of my favorite concerts to go back to. And when I'm talking about In Sound From Way Out and the funk jams, uh, in the middle of this concert, boom, they do a funk session, and it's just uh, this jazz soul funk session. It's just great. And uh, Money Mark is a, uh, appears on that and helps back them up. So I highly recommend this if you like concert videos. Uh, a lot of famous celebrities in the crowd and uh, just the way it's edited together is just fantastic. But what's, what's funny is I thought this was a new concept, but it wasn't. Way back uh, when they were in college and they were doing the early punk version of the band, they had that concept already where they had passed out these 16 millimeter cameras uh, to kids while they were on stage. They had done that before which is kind of cool. And some of the other themes I noticed is some of the early stuff, uh, the in sound from way out, and uh, some of their inspiration and, the, and their sound kind of stays consistent from then you know, forward. I mean, they just do different things with it. Uh, this is Grand Royal, but kind of a white label there. I'll wipe off that fingerprint label later. Um, but uh, the cover and some of the uh, things that they do in the next album and in the past uh, come from this Perry Kingsley uh, album. So this is electronic uh, synthesizer kind of stuff. Uh, so you can see the uh, comparison there between the two albums. So what was neat about this is when you play this, electronic sounds and things like that appear on previous Beastie Boys albums and then also their next one, Hello Nasty. They do a lot of that in there. And uh, Hello Nasty, 1998, things were kind of quiet. I remember I started my uh, uh, job at my new company that I've, been, <laughs> that I've been there 20 years coming up in July. I remember Jason Ross bringing in this uh, CD and we hooked it up to the boom box and just blasted it. And we were like, yes, the Beastie Boys are back. So uh, bringing back the sense of humor, but also delivering great music. Uh, the first time I got this was actually just Christmas of this year or last year. And uh, there's the Beastie's uh, space station there. Kind of a space theme. Really cool album. Uh, what's the, you know, Intergalactic, I think is the, the big one off of here, Body Moving. I'm real familiar with this whole album. Like side C and D, it starts to get a little bit more chill, a little bit more experimental. But uh, 3D, 3M Season 1 DJ. This is just another good, solid Beastie Boys album, 1998. I mean, it was, it was awesome. And I think right after that, they released uh, one of their, uh, was it the Scient... I forget what it was called, but it was a really cool compilation album. And my buddy had that on CD too. Kind of sticking with the space theme. Uh, this is a double LP reissue of that album. And they have very nice inner sleeves on that too. Man, I feel like I'm leaving out some stuff I wanted to say. They have, again, they had the lyrics much like Paul's Boutique, if you want to try and read that. <laughs> there are a couple parts where I'm like, what did they just say? And then I'll, I'll want to go dig them up and look at it. I uh, found this. Uh, this is kind of cool. It popped up. It's still sealed, so sorry about the glare. <laughs> Check out the hamster there. This is the 12-inch single uh, for Intergalactic uh, with this uh, hamster wreaking havoc, <laughs> King Kong style. Uh, found this in L.A. at Six City, and I just have it. I don't see a need to break it open uh just a couple different versions and remixes of intergalactic i could go on and on to the break of dawn about the beastie boys and telling you to visit paul paul's boutique 
while giving you a license to ill communication and telling you to check your head until you say, hello, nasty. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. So let's check out the pictures, y'all. All right, this 45 got out of place, but I did want to show this. This is a jukebox only 45 for a live with Big Shot live on the back. Pretty cool addition. And then I want to move on to 2004, I believe. Uh, this is uh, to the five boroughs. A little bit of a nostalgic uh, visit to their old neighborhood uh, in Brooklyn. Really nice layout. And then also some, certainly some leftover sentiments from 9-11. Um, with the challenge here at the end, I think they have a, a open letter. An open letter to New York City is a really great track. Um, even though this is about their neighborhood in New York City, I do feel like they kind of welcome everybody in to kind of uh, partake because we all get nostalgic about the old neighborhood from time to time. Uh, the famous track on here is uh, "Check It Out," and uh, this is just a really good. It's very I don't know. It's very mature for for the Beastie Boys, but. And, and a, a little bit more socially aware, I think, than some of their previous previous albums. But there's the lyrics inside. Great pen. I love this artwork. I wanted to hunt this thing down forever. Wow, it gets dirty quick. I have to be careful with that. But um, it's a nice matte finish, but definitely susceptible to dirt. Uh, love this album. Hunting this thing down. This is like one of those iconic covers that sits in your want box for so long. And I never could really track down a copy because they're so expensive. And then thanks to the 2017 reissues, I was able to fill in these gaps and be able to have the whole discography. Custom labels. And that's why they're on Capitol, because they went from Grand Royal to Capitol, and then Capitol must have done all the reissues. Um, yeah, two great slabs of wax right there. Uh, it kind of took a step back and they released the mix-up. So if you like the funk stuff from InSound from Way Out, you're going to love the mix-up. So a lot of instrumentals. I do think there's some lyrics on here. I haven't listened to this in a long time. But again, this one was made possible because of the 2017 reissue. So this is the mix-up. Some really good ones on here. Electric Worm. I do have the, the 45 for that. I'm not as familiar. I've listened to this, uh, but I had a digital version, so I'm not as familiar with all the names of the songs. But little mouse there running the engine, and Beastie Boys on the top left there. So the mix up, if you like these jams, uh, you can come back and listen to that. Kind of went with an orange slice label there in the middle. The mix up. Yeah, here it is. I knew I had it in here somewhere. Uh, so this is the Electric Worm. 45, I don't even remember what's on the B-side. Suco de uh, Tangria. Suck, suck an orange, <laughs> maybe. All right, so there's a, a pretty cool little 45 find to go with the album. Okay, so their final album is quickly coming up. I believe that came out in, uh, I, I forget now, is it 2011? But uh, Too Many Rappers came out, I think, in 2009 and kind of preceded it. And this is the one where they had the awesome video with all the celebrity appearances on it. Uh, but Too Many Rappers, and that was a single off a of Hot Sauce Committee Part 2. Never knew what happened with the Part 1. If there's recordings, there's a, recordings they were going to release a Part 1. Never did. They went straight to Part 2 and went with these recordings. Uh, and this is the last and final album that they released. Uh, Make Some Noise, uh, great uh, great track on there. Uh, Too Many Rappers is also really good. More of the Bill Harper collection. Um, I think they referred to that in some other tracks. So, But anyway, another excellent release and also reissued. So that way it, I was able to, I, I shot myself in the, you know, was shooting myself in the foot for not for not picking this up when it first released. With, it came with a t-shirt and a seven inch. I thought 40 bucks was a little too expensive and the price is shot right up. So this but the reissue is much more affordable and uh, really high quality pressings, really cool labels to go with the theme of the artwork there. So that is Hot Sauce Committee Part 2. Go check out that video if you get a chance, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, it's got Will Ferrell in it, um, the guy from The Lord of the Rings, just a whole you know, star-studded cast. Uh, and then Adam Yauch did pass away uh, August 5th, 1964 to May 4th, 2012. Passed away about a year after that album. 
Um, this is a unofficial uh, bootleg pressing. I was a little, I was caught if I wanted to buy this or not, but I, I like the collage of all the different pictures. You see him there with his daughter. And, um, and there's also some, like, some thoughts and condolences there on the back of the album. So I wanted to pick that up. Uh, it's basically just a compilation, a compilation album and it's pressed on this uh, color, color vinyl. So with uh, Adam, you know, he's, I remember reading he spent some of his last days on the farm going, you know, trying to do holistic, uh, holistic medicine and uh, stayed at Cheryl Crow's farm, I believe his final days. But uh, that was pretty much the end of the Beastie Boys and I don't blame them. Uh, so even though I won't, like I said before, even though I won't be able to see them live, I still have their legacy here on vinyl. And if there's ever any kind of reunion, uh, hopefully they can find the right person to fill in. So Beastie Boys, glad to have them as a part of our uh, rock and roll history and glad that they got nominated and, and, and inducted into the Rock Hall of Fame. It was well deserved. And uh, just what, what can you say, part of my life go, going all the way back to 85 and uh, all the way up to 2011. So um, Ad Rock, I know, I know he's in the restaurant business and or, or Mike D, uh, Mike Diamond ended up getting into the restaurant business and you see some interviews with him from time to time. And, and then I think uh, Ad Rock was in a couple different films and, and they stay busy. I know there was a park, there was a park in Brooklyn uh, dedicated to uh, to uh, Adam Yalk, MCA. So um, I know if I ever get a chance to go to New York, I would like to visit that park. So, hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope I didn't go on too long. And uh, tell me what your favorite Beastie Boys album is or maybe some thoughts and comments on this. Take care, guys. Adam Yalk wrote this and he wanted, wanted me to read it, wanted us to read it. I'd like to dedicate this award to my brothers, Adam and Mike, uh, who've walked the globe with me. To anyone who has been touched by our bands, who well, our music has meant something to. This induction is as much ours as it is yours. But of course, there's too many names to name. You know who you are, and I send my love out to all of you, your friend Adam Yauch. Thank you, everybody.